Welcome to the Donaldson Clean Solutions webinar, Why Fuel Filters Plug. I am Jim Doyle, Senior Engineer at Donaldson. This is our sixth in a series of webinars on diesel fuel. Diesel fuel filtration, we've always done it this way, it was credited to pioneering computer scientist Grace Murray Hooper. A recent quote from the Petroleum Marketers Association of America newsletter states something similar. In a significant victory for the Petroleum Marketers Association, the National Conference on Weights and Measures voted down a proposal to mandate 10 micron diesel fuel filters. Currently, the market uses 30 micron filters for diesel fuel and a 10 micron for gasoline. The reality is, things change. The diesel engine has changed dramatically and it has much more stringent filtration needs than it did only a few years ago. There is much more to it than just a change in the rating on the filter, of the filter efficiency on the can. Early diesel engines in the 1920s through 1970s operated with diesel injection pressures of 1,500 to 5,000 psi and were quite tolerant of fine particulate in the fuel. Many had only screens for fuel system protection. Think of a typical pressure washer as a range of pressure that would be comparable. Curiously, the latest high-tech gasoline direct injection systems are now only running up to about 1,750 psi total. Over time, more advanced diesel fuel injection systems evolved running at 13,000 to 23,000 psi from the late 1980s to the early 2000s. These systems were also still quite tolerant of fine particulate. These fuel systems only needed reasonably good protection from particulate 7 to 10 microns and larger. Think of something about the size of a red blood cell. These engines were long considered able to burn just about anything, including blending in used oils, blends of residual fuel oils and diesel, some home heating oils, jet fuel, etc. Modern high-pressure common rail in injected diesel engines have been transitioning into service since the mid-2000s. These systems run in pressure ranges from 30,000 to 45,000 psi and beyond. They are much more sensitive to very fine particulate, as small as 2 microns, as small as a yeast or bacteria. It is also worth noting that this is the same pressure range used for water jet cutting of thick steel pipe and plate. The inescapable fact is that higher pressure injection is needed to meet modern emissions requirements and extremely tight tolerance high pressure pumps and injectors require protection from even the smallest particulate. These pumps and injectors are now carefully manufactured and serviced in clean room facilities due to this extreme sensitivity to particulate. Diesel fuel is a very thin fluid that does not tend to carry large visible particulate. Virtually all visible material, 40 microns and larger, in fuel will settle down into stationary tank bottoms fairly quickly. If the visible particulate is left there and not stirred up, it generally will not contribute directly to plugging of filtration as fuel is dispensed into equipment or run through the engine fuel system. Large sediment carried by a fast flowing river would be an example of something like this. As soon as the flow slows down, large things like cars and buildings, trains, etc. are dropped and left where the fl when the flow slowed down. If that same tank of fuel that had the particulate settled to the bottom uh, is stirred up by driving around or being moved and then pumped from, that debris can be pumped around or transferred and plug filters quickly. Think of it as something like a snow globe being shaken up. The same cannot be said for the fine particulate in the fuel, however. By that, we are talking about things less than about 7 microns in size. They remain suspended for very long periods of time. Most all fuel particulate contamination surveys describe a fuel debris size distribution that is similar to is what it depicted on this graph. The red line, starting at the far right, shows the cumulative number of particles of various sizes found in fuel samples. Perhaps 1% are 10 microns and larger, and 5% are 6 microns and larger. And the vast majority of particulate in number are below 6 to 7 microns. Keeping this fine particle distribution in mind, we can add filtration performance to the conversation and point out some critical differences in various filters' ability to remove particles from fuel. A range of filter curves has been overlaid to depict their ability to remove the particulate found in fuel. The green line is a coarse 25 to 30 micron typical dispenser filter 
and is, is good at removing large particles, but its ability to remove smaller and smaller particles drops off quickly. Since there are very few large particles and the filter does not capture the small ones, they tend to last for a very long time and don't reduce the debris load in the fuel significantly. A common sight and comment about these filters is that they may have been painted over long ago and are working great since they are rarely if ever changed. A traditional on equipment primary and secondary filter combo, the dark and light blue lines, has been a 15 micron followed by a 7 to 10 micron secondary filter. They too are good at removing the big stuff and drop off significantly on the small end of things. This was fine for older series of engines and their fuel systems. The purple line way at the top depicts the filtration needed to protect modern high pressure common rail fuel systems. And to keep these systems operating correctly, filters need to remove essentially all of the particles in the fuel that are two microns and larger. This is a much bigger task than has traditionally been required. For another perspective on this change and how it relates to filters plugging quickly or unexpectedly, let's look at some real world fuel dirt levels and how big a job the filters have to do. The cleanest possible fuel, typically straight out of a refinery, is basically clean enough to go into an older engine without filtering. Its dirt load is so low, it is clean enough to not cause any issues in an older engine fuel system. The filters in that case have little if anything to do. But this exact same fuel is about 16 times dirtier than a modern high pressure common rail engine can handle and therefore needs significant filtration before the fuel injection system. More typical fuel passed through pipelines, terminals, and trucks needs about a 4 to 8x reduction in particulate to be acceptable in an older engine, but needs a 64 to 128x reduction in debris for a modern engine. This dirt concentration is now a maximum contaminant guideline uh, from most engine and equipment manufacturers. This is spelled out in something called the Worldwide Fuel Charter, and it calls out an ISO cleanliness code of 181613. This is a shorthand code for describing the debris concentration in oils and fuels. There is talk in the industry of pushing for a reduction of this maximum due to the continued field operability issues at this cleanliness level. Less than ideally handled fuel from marginally uh, maintained or protected fuel infrastructure needs about 16 to 32x reduction in dirt for older engines. And we can see where this is going for new high pressure common rail engines, they must now have about 256 to 512x reduction in debris to protect the engine fuel system. Dirt concentrations at this level are what have traditionally been considered when sizing and designing fuel uh, systems and filters to reliably meet minimum service intervals. As you can see, the job filtration must do is getting much harder for the new fuel systems. Fuel on the higher end of contamination from poorly maintained or managed fuel supplies would be about 64 times dirtier than is needed for a traditional engine, but over a thousand times dirtier than needed for a modern high pressure common rail system. These last two fuel contamination levels tend to correlate with new engine fuel system operability issues, and it is the fine particulate below 7 micron that is the major contributor to shortening filter life not the big stuff that you can see with the naked eye that is what people tend to focus on. There are even situations where fuel in the more typical range can have operability issues for some users. Clear and bright, the long-standing practice of visually looking through a glass bottle of fuel is still commonly used today. This level of assessment, long ago, loosely correlated to what would not cause issues in older style engines and fuel systems. It is a very rough estimate of combined level of both particulate and water contamination in fuel. By the time you can visually see a contamination level in fuel sample, it is thousands of times dirtier than a new fuel system can run without rapid filter plug issues. Water and sediment test results have also been commonly reported for fuels at time of transfer or purchase. The limited detection of this test method is also hundreds or thousands of times higher than a modern engine can operate on reliably. It was never meant as a quality assessment for final engine operability, merely a bulk transfer rough quality estimate. These methods do not directly correlate or evaluate a fuel for its impact on equipment operation directly. The fuel user 
wants to ensure that the fuel will not create unexpected downtime when burned in their engines. Filterability is the property of fuel that allows it to run through a standard fuel system, including bulk filters or onboard filtration, and meet the expected design service intervals for fuel cleanliness levels. For the actual fuel user, directly assessing the fuel's tendency to plug filters is a more meaningful way to eval evaluate fuel and its impact on equipment and fuel system filtration. Another important aspect this new need for tighter filtration raises is an inconsistent experience for fuel users. The same fuel can impact different users in dramatically different ways. As an example, a school bus fleet of 150 buses may use a 7,500 gallon tanker truck of fuel in a week. That same load of fuel can be consumed in three mine haul trucks in about three days. Each school bus has a fuel filter on it and there are typically three fuel filters in parallel on each haul truck for a total of nine. It would take a school bus about 20 days to use the same amount of fuel per filter as the haul truck does in just three days. If a fuel quality issue is going on, these two consumers would see a dramatically different impact with the haul truck filters plugging all the time and the buses may see a bit more frequent filter changing than an average service interval. A similar situation exists for end users with equipment of varying ages. With two similar machines, the older one can run fine on a particular fuel and the newer equipment will be plugging filters again and again and again. This change in filtration need also raises some other things that can dramatically shorten filter life. High efficiency filters that plug rapidly very rarely plug in what you would consider traditional dirt or hard particulate. Cold weather operation can have a more severe impact on modern engine operability as well. Filtration of fine particulate from fuel cannot happen at or below cloud point. At the cloud point, the fuel generates many thousands of times more wax particles that are the same size as the hard particulate and filters plug immediately. Adding more cold flow improver in this situation will only make things worse. It does not make the fuel liquid at that temperature. It simply creates more fine solids as it is designed to do. The addition of cold flow improver is done to allow fuel as it cools towards cloud point to pass through coarse screens and pumps, not high efficiency filters. We have a webinar, an earlier series in the we of this series of webinars that covers this. Biodiesel blends have an increased potential to create solids compared to a straight ultra low sulfur diesel as they are blended and cool in the fall or winter conditions or pick up water in distribution. As B100 or biodiesel blends drop towards their cloud point, they are more likely to create fine solids that do not go back into solution when warmed like ultra low sulfur diesel waxes do and therefore can contribute to plugging. We also have a webinar on biodiesel and its uh, its appearance in the fuel systems as well. Certain fuel additive and, and contaminant reactions can also create ultra-fine particulate. Some of the traditional internal diesel injector deposit materials seen in older engines are actually solids in the fuel supply that had passed on through coarse filtration and created deposits in the injectors. These same materials will load in new high efficiency filtration plugging fuel filters rather than contributing to deposit uh, injectors uh, formation. So whose job is it to ensure fuel cleanliness? Fuel at the time of manufacture at the refinery is generally very clean. There are occasional changeover situations where tanks get low for winter fuel changeover or service of infrastructure or manufacturing issues that can lead to the occasional fuel with higher than normal fine particulate loads heading downstream to end users but most fuel leaving the refinery is of good quality and has the necessary fuel additives to meet industry diesel fuel standards for distribution and use. In distribution, fuel moves by pipeline, tanker truck, train, barge, etc., generally to large bulk tanks at terminals when fuel is finally sent out to bulk fuel purchasers. Uh, additional additives are dosed in and various blends are made at the rack as the truck is offloaded. Here again, there are seasonal changeover low tank level concerns. Each time fuel is moved or put in or pumped out of a tank, it picks up more debris. The general rule is that the more fuel is moved, 
the more chances it has to pick up debris. Fuel leaving this stage is of a quality fit for use, but is not finely filtered. However, good fuel making one trip through a dirty tank with fine debris in it can carry that debris all the way to the end user if not filtered out. At the end fuel use site, fuel is pumped from the delivery truck or gravity fed into on-site storage tanks and then pumped into equipment. Fuel quality at that point is a summation of all that has happened to it since refining. It is generally stated by diesel equipment manufacturers that it is the equipment owner operator's responsibility to ensure fuel is of adequate quality to prevent damage or unexpected downtime due to fuel quality. From the time of manufacture to the end use, there are several chances for fuel to pick up or generate a higher than normal concentration of very fine particulate. To prevent this material from impacting operation of equipment, it is best to quality check it with tight filtration before the on-engine secondary, but close to the point of use. Obvious locations to do this are at the time of fuel offload into final storage or as it is pumped into equipment. So what can a fuel user with new equipment do to stay ahead of things? You can buy fuel from a reputable supplier and know what you are buying. We have a webinar on that in this series as well. Uh, you can keep your fuel infrastructure clean and dry. We have a webinar on that to prevent uh, debris buildup. You can pre-filter your fuel with high efficiency filtration, similar to what is on your engines. Uh, we have found no magic in the fuel hoses, either coming off the fuel truck or into storage uh, uh, or into equipment. The fuel that goes in one end is roughly the same quality as it leaves the other end. In most cases, it changes very little in storage if used quickly. It is worth noting that there is often pushback on filtering fuel at time of delivery to a customer site because we've always done it that way and it can potentially slow the fuel truck offload and significant filtration is not possible in gravity fuel drops. Filtration is however a means of catching a fuel quality issue for the customer at the time of purchase or dispense and gives everyone time to react to a situation rather than impact equipment operation. Once fuel is off the delivery truck the responsibility generally falls to the customer to fix the fuel quality issue that has been delivered into their tank. For equipment using high pressure common rail engines, the fine filtration must be done somewhere. There is no more try backing off from a 7 micron to a 10 micron secondary filter on the engine to get more runtime like we all used to do. Allowing fine particulate to pass one filter only lets it onto the next and finally the on engine filter that plugs it unexpectedly. Know what you are fixing with additives at the end user site. Virtually all fuel delivered meets industry minimum specifications. Adding more fuel additives to what is already there may or may not be necessary. The fuel property of concern may have been fine in the first place. Some additives to proactively manage a current or previous microbial issue or added stability improver for long-term storage uh, of fuel can do some good. Many equipment manufacturers recommend detergents, etc. But for some others, it is critical to know what the fuel property is you are trying to fix and what the reason is for doing so. It is common to fall back to the more is better approach, and in some cases, that can be disastrous when it comes to filterability. Lastly, buy fuel appropriate for the weather conditions. It is tempting to save money by purchasing fuel that someone claims will work in a much colder weather at or below the fuel's natural cloud point or it has a lower pour point or cold filter plugging point than normal. If these conditions do occur, operation issues tend to arise. Even the manufacturers of cold weather additives tout only the fact that it can help with gelled fuel bulk transfer and emergency startup, not ongoing operation or meaningful particulate filtration at or below the fuel's natural cloud point.